Hello, my name is Paul Stewart and I'm at Doha International Airport where I'm in the Al Safwa First Class Lounge um, just before my flight to Sydney. Let's go check it out. This lounge is Qatar's flagship first class lounge and interestingly is only open to those travelling in first class and not either One World or Qatar status passengers as with most other airlines. Those Platinums and Emeralds are directed to a separate lounge. I'll start by showing you around the lounge's various features and then finish up with what I had for lunch and dinner. There's several entrances, although I entered via the separate first class check-in, customs and security. The footage really doesn't do this lounge justice as it really is massive and aesthetically stunning. There's several displays of art on loan from the Museum of Islamic Art in Doha and these include this painting from Mughal, India and this Ottoman piece from 1450 AD. And in the centre of the lounge is this water piece which looks great and provides a calming waterfall soundtrack. After wandering around the lounge a little more, I headed up to my nap room. These are essentially hotel rooms with either a single or two beds, a TV and a bathroom. Some also include a desk. You're allowed to stay in these for up to six hours. Thankfully, and unlike on a recent visit to the BA First Galleries Lounge at Heathrow, the staff had power adapters as my Australian and Greek power plugs wouldn't fit. After relaxing here for a few hours, I was off to the spa. Controversially, everything here has to be paid for and is rather pricey. I had a 20 minute energizer neck, back and leg massage, and while it was really good, it cost 230 Qatari dollars, which is equivalent to a quarter of the Greek GDP or approximately 63 US dollars. In contrast, many other airlines offer proper massages that are completely free. Having said that though, the massage provided at Cathay, BA and JAL's first lounges isn't much more than a tap and squeeze of your traps without oil and the clothes are all left on. Because this was a proper massage with minimal clothing and oil, you're given these disposable undies, which was a novelty. After that, I had a tour around the spa and looked at a few of the other services they offer. Here's a business centre for business people to conduct business, even if they've forgotten their laptops. Another great feature of the lounge are family rooms. 
I know that noisy children are quite distracting and often the parents feel quite guilty about that. In here, there's quite a number of individual family rooms and playrooms full of toys to keep young ones entertained for hours. A rather odd thing about this lounge is that you can't access the showers in the nap rooms if your layover is too brief and you have to pay to use the showers in the spa. The only remaining free showers are in this family room. There's usually more food and drink on display, but this was mostly removed due to my visit being during Ramadan. This is why you'll also see no alcohol served at all. Back out in the common area, there's lots more seats, all of which have power plugs, and some have individual screens with flight details, because there's no announcements made about boarding. There's also these semi-private pods, which again come with a TV screen with flight information and power plugs. Out here is a terrace where you can get some of the airport ambience, if that's your kind of thing. And finally, before I head to the restaurant, a quick visit to the media room. As you would expect, there's a massive restaurant with an a la carte menu. I understand there's also a buffet, although this wasn't operating due to Ramadan. The service was really good, and here's a quick look at the menu, followed by what I had for lunch and then dinner. And before dinner, I also had a quick check of the Wi-Fi speed. I should also note that there's a smoking room and a duty-free shop, although they didn't want photos taken of the latter. In conclusion, this is a really good lounge. The aesthetics are amazing, it's huge, and as you could see from the footage, sparsely used, so you feel quite special. The staff are really good and will greet you as you walked around the lounge. I feel that having to pay for the spa is a bit tight, especially when all of the passengers there are actually flying in first class and don't just have status with Qatar or One World. Although, I will admit, the massage itself was one of the best I've had. I hope you found the video interesting and helpful. I'll be uploading a review of the in-flight Qatar A380 first class product through to Sydney in coming days, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching.